Well, hey, everyone out there. Thanks for choosing our short explanation of the expansion to Everdell. This is Everdell Pearl Brook. Now, if you're not already familiar with the base game of Everdell, please take a moment to watch our other short explanation video. The link for it is just down in the description below. Take a few moments to familiarize yourself with the base game, then come on back this way and we'll show you how Pearlbrook works. Now, if you're already familiar with Everdell, we'll uh, tell you a little bit more here about the expansion. It's from Starling Games. It's for one to four players. It's for ages 13 and up, and the average game time is about 40 to 80 minutes. The objective of the game is to be the player with the highest score at the end of four seasons by building your Critter City. Now let's open it up and see what's inside the box. There is the river board and two overlays. There's a new set of workers to choose from, the otters. There are the frog ambassadors, one for each player, 20 new critter and construction cards, 12 river destination and citizen cards, 8 adornment mini cards, 25 pearls, and 4 wonders. Set up the main board and place the river board to the side like this. Take the two overlays and place them on the main board in this area. Now take the four wonders and place them along the overlays like this. Take the river citizen cards and shuffle them. Take two without looking and return the rest back to the box. Now do the same with the river destination cards. Then take the remaining four cards and shuffle them. Place the four cards face down in the area of the river board like this. Place the ever tree on the stump on the main board. Take the new critter and construction cards and shuffle them in with the original cards. Later, when you're trying to separate the decks, you can tell which are which by seeing this symbol on the card. Once shuffled, Deal eight face-up cards to the meadow and place the rest of the cards under the ever tree. Place one pearl on each of the four cards that are face down on the river board. Take the rest of the pearls and place them here. Place the rest of the normal resources in their usual areas. Each player should choose their color and collect their two workers. They should place the rest of their workers in the ever tree as normal. Each player should also collect their frog ambassador. Lay out the forest cards and the event cards as normal. Shuffle the adornment mini cards. Deal two to each player. Return the rest to the box. Players may look at these cards at any time and they do not count towards your hand limit. Pick a player to go first, and play goes clockwise around the table. The first player draws five cards. The second draws six, the third draws seven, and the fourth player draws eight. Now we are ready to play. Play for Everdell Pearlbrook works exactly like the original game. Players on their turn have the usual three options. They can place a worker, they can play a card, or they can prepare for the next season. Now they will also have an additional option of playing their Frog Ambassador. The Frog Ambassador symbol looks like this. You will find them on the river board and on a few of the new construction cards. These spaces are only for the Frog Ambassador, and they work the same as a worker space. If it is a closed space, then only one frog ambassador can be here at a time. If it is an open space, then multiple frog ambassadors can come here. Frog ambassadors are not allowed to be used in spaces for workers and vice versa. The frog ambassadors are played much like workers. Once he is placed, he remains in that spot until it is time to prepare for the next season when he is retrieved like the other workers. When your frog ambassador is the first to visit a river destination, they collect the pearl that is on top of the card. In order to visit here, 
you need to have the indicated amount of cards in your city listed. Once the pearl is collected, flip over the card. The card will give you the opportunity to make an exchange of goods and points. Simply read the card to find out what is required and what is given. The other option is to visit the shoal. Here, the player needs to pay two of any resource and discard two cards in order to collect a pearl. When it comes to playing a card, players can also choose to play one of their adornment cards. Playing an adornment card does not count towards the size of your city. You pay the necessary costs and flip over the card. The top part of the card will activate immediately. The bottom part of the card is how many points will be collected at the end of the game. Next we'll move on to the wonders. When you have enough of the resources in order to collect a wonder, you would deploy your worker to that wonder and pay the resources. Then, when you prepare for the next season, you collect the wonder to bring it back to your city. At the end of the game, each wonder is worth the amount of points listed. And speaking of scoring, if you have any pearls left over at the end of the game, each are worth two points when counting the score. So that's all of the additional gameplay for Everdell Pearlbrook. We sure hope you enjoyed our video today. And if so, we we'll hope you'll take a moment to leave us a like and a subscribe. You can click that bell for notifications and you'll know when we're putting out new videos. If you have any questions about Everdell or Everdell Pearl Brook, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. Now that you know the basics, let's play.